This year, Golden Valley voters will elect a mayor and two city council members. The candidates for those positions squared off last week in a candidate forum hosted by the League of Women Voters. One of the questions asked to the candidates for mayor is something you might be asking too if you follow city council meetings. The current mayor, Chef Harris, and his challenger, council member Steve Schmidgall, align on nearly all issues, almost always voting the same way. So what separates them on the ballot for mayor? Here's what they said. I feel like I have a, a style um, that's more business-like, as I've mentioned uh, many times. I want to focus the city government on, on what I consider to be the mission of city government. Some policy areas, social justice issues, I think is where we've really had some collegial disagreements. Areas around gun safety, uh, protecting immigrants' rights, uh, even some affordable housing issues. The two talked about a variety of issues, and you can watch the full forum on our website, ccxmedia.org. Just click on the local vote banner, and that's on the home page. A Plymouth man has been charged with theft by swindle for stealing money from an estate where he was the executor. Hennepin County Attorney Mike Freeman says 51-year-old David Abel took money that was supposed to go to charity. A will directed Smile Network International to receive half of the estate, but the organization did not get all of the payments. Abel admitted under oath during a divorce proceeding that he took money from the estate to pay for personal debts. He's scheduled to be in court in November. Medical device giant Becton Dickinson and Company plans to close its New Hope facility and is in the process of laying off dozens of employees. The company, also known as BD, plans to shut down the Latonix Technology Center in New Hope. That facility makes a drug-coated balloon device to treat blocked blood vessels in the legs. Layoffs are expected to begin in December and that will affect more than 50 employees. The city of Brooklyn Park is exploring the possibility of selling parkland to a school. Fair Oaks Park is located right next to Excel Academy, a K-8 charter school that serves about 500 students. The school is looking to purchase at least a sliver of parkland from the city so it can expand its building and also construct a playground. According to the city, the park is used for the sport of cricket. During a work session on Monday night, council members remarked about how the park currently doesn't get much use. Should historic Fort Snelling get a new name? That was the question before a group of citizens in Brooklyn Park on Monday night. The Minnesota Historical Society says the site's name doesn't do reflect that. the whole so story. The and they're touring the state asking if Minnesotans agree. If the name is changed, the fort itself would remain Fort Snelling, but the overall site would get a new moniker. Society officials say the site's story covers much more than the fort, including the history of the area before the fort was built in 1820. Our job is to tell the best stories possible, the most accurate, the best documented, and in the best way possible that includes as many Minnesotans as we can. That's our job. This name piece is really a reflection of that process. Majala says the consensus from the meeting so far is leaning toward renaming the site. It's been almost a year since Brooklyn Center passed a beekeeping ordinance. And now that the first growing season is behind us, reporter Pafua Yang checks in for an update. But I'm like, Believe it or not. I have four, four uh, condos for my ladies. 300,000 bees are working hard inside these hives, located in Sierra Caper's backyard. I have several gallons of honey that I'm able to, to harvest in the fall or right about now. Capers has been keeping bees for seven years, saying it's vital to a healthy environment. It's definitely not a hobby that is for everybody, but it's um, it's something that brings me a lot of joy. But last year, Capers was concerned she'd have to let her friends go because yeah, of the so buzz in the city off, over whether to pass a beekeeping in. ordinance. So the ordinance, the way it was written before, was kind of, it, it didn't allow for the city to really regulate anything. It just said that Brooklyn Center was aware that people were keeping and that they were silent on the issue. The city ended up voting in the bee's favor, but with some regulations, including a required city registration. Uh, there is one way to request that a bee registration gets denied, and that's if your neighbor can document that they have a 
bee allergy. Other rules include that bee colonies need to be at least 30 feet away from a neighbor's home. City leaders say so far only five people have registered. You know, I think one, one issue was maybe the ordinance went into effect a little bit later in the spring, so not everybody was able to prepare all winter for it, so maybe we expect more next year. Overall, Anderson thinks it's been going well. And so does Capers, as she gets her honey gatherers ready for the winter. Brooklyn Center, Pafuyang, CCX News. And a fun fact for you, honeybees don't hibernate during the winter. They cluster together and shiver to create friction. That friction can generate temperatures up to 90 degrees. If your yard is soggy from all of the recent rainfall, you're not the only one. Brookview Golf Course in Golden Valley also has saturated places. They're even pumping some water off the fairways. That's something they do from time to time as part of their overall water management strategy. The good news, it didn't keep people from enjoying what could be one of the last good golf days of the year. Enjoy it while you can. It's a sign of the times for many families. Kids are often so involved with activities that they don't get to know other kids who might live right down the street. An Osseo woman named Dory Trossen hopes to change that. She started a before and after school program in Site Park that she hopes will encourage Osseo kids to connect. My kid may not know a kid that lives just down the street because they spend all their time in a neighboring city and that's where they're growing their community over there. And if we want Osseo to be strong like it is, it's nice to have kids here and get to know each other. The business is called Mind Body Soul LLC. And if there's a rainy day, they meet over at St. Paul's Lutheran Church. They hope to get, keep the fun going all winter long. And for more stories like this, check out our website, ccxmedia.org. Sponsor the team portion of the state girls tennis tournament are on the line this week. Wyzetta is the top seed for the section 5 AA tournament. The Trojans face St. Michael Albertville in the semifinals. One doubles, Elise Koldanowski shots. It's up a volley winner for Emily Mendel and the Trojans point. Later in the first set, Koldanowski floats a lob winner, but they lose in three sets to Ellie Brewer and Gabby Olson. Two singles, Emma Hawkinson serves for Wyzetta and then rips the forehand winner. Hawkinson will then slice an approach shot and hammers the volley winner for the Trojans. She loses though to Meta Madurki. One singles, Miriam Stamen hustles to the short ball and rips a forehand winner for Wyzetta. And then Stamen will get St. Michael's Emma Thole on the run with a drop shot. And that sets up a lob winner for Stamen. She beats Thole in straight sets. Wyzetta wins 4-3 to advance to Thursday's section final of highlights from Maple Grove semifinal match Wednesday here on CCX. Wyzetta's volleyball team is one of the state's best this fall. The Trojans are ranked third in Class 3A and they added another win to their total Monday night. Wyzetta facing Hill Murray in a non-conference match. The first set is close. Wyzetta works the slide play as Olivia Johnson sets to Lily Emlog for the hammer and the Trojans lead 14-13. On set point, Johnson goes right side to Kate Long and she gets the kill as Wyzetta takes a 25-20 win in the opening set against the Pioneers. Second set and Johnson spreads the ball around, this time setting up Caitlin Emke for the kill in a 16 to 10 and lead for Wyzetta. And they roll from there. Sophie Jesuits on the attack from the left side, finds an opening in the middle of the court for a kill. The Trojans win set 2, 25, 12. And they are in control throughout set number three. Elizabeth Helmick's hit, too tough for Hill Murray to dig up as Wyzetta wins in three for their 19th win of the season. The high school soccer playoffs get underway this week. As we enter the postseason, one local girls team is ranked first in the state in Class AA. Champlain Park is number one for the first time in school history. The Rebels finished the regular season with a 14-0-1 record and have the top seed for the Section 5 AA playoffs. They open against Park Center on Thursday. Rosemont is ranked second, followed in the top five by Stillwater, Centennial, and Maple Grove, with another Northwest Suburban Conference team, Andover, ranked sixth. Maple Grove is the top seed in the Section 8 playoffs. They host their first playoff section game on Saturday. 
It's been a strong regular season for the Park Center boys soccer team. The Pirates are the top seed for the Section 5AA tournament, which starts Thursday. On this week's Sports Jam show on CCX, Jay Wilcox profiles the Pirates' Chief Williams. Here's a clip from that story. For Chief and a lot of talented scorers, dealing with being held and roughed up a bit by opposing teams isn't fun, but it's part of the deal. I have to deal with that every day. Um, we have a game. Um, before we even played all the teams, they already know my name, and I'd be like, what? What do you know me from? <laughs> yeah, so I have to deal with all that. Um, guys try to get in my head, but I just played the game. It's what I love to do, and I just played the game. I've been playing soccer since I was a baby. I always had a soccer ball, so here now it don't bother me. It's just having fun and guys trying to get in my head. It's, I'm used to it, so. Williams moved to the U.S. from Monrovia, Liberia about six years ago, first settling in New Jersey before moving to Minnesota. He was definitely surprised to find so many from his homeland in the Brooklyn Park, Brooklyn Center area. It just makes you feel at home, um, having the favorite food that you like um, and just having all your people and, and speaking the same language. I speak English, but a certain way we talk and we understand it, so it's, it's fun knowing all, having all the race and all the people. It just shows a beautiful world we live in today. So, Watch the rest of the Chief Williams story, plus much more this week on Sports Jam. It's on through Wednesday on ccxmedia.org.